Stand up. Stand up and raise your heads. Your redemption is drawing near. Welcome to Advent and welcome to Christ Evangelical Lutheran Church here in Kelowna, British Columbia. My name is Pastor Patricia Genalia and I'm delighted to welcome you in this virtual space. Advent, Advent, the time is coming near. Advent, time of preparation. Advent, the time of waiting. Advent is a gift of the church. The first season, the beginning of the new church year. Time to pause, to reflect, to give thanks for the year that was and to prepare for the year to come. The year in your day to day, the year in your family, the year in your career, the year in your faith. Advent was originally intended as a time of fasting and prayerful contemplation in preparation for the birth of the Christ child. Our culture has turned it that time largely into the more hectic preparation for Christmas, and so it might be for most of us. But the Advent call to pause, reflect, take a spiritual time out is still there. We can and we ought to take a pause in the midst of the push of the world and remind ourselves that we are human beings, not human doings. And at times it is important to simply be. Be in the quiet at the end of the day or the early morning. Be in the presence of God be in the calm of knowing that we are loved and redeemed, regardless of the doing or the not doing. Here at Christ Lutheran, we continue with alternating services in English and German, November 28th and December 12th in German, December 5th and 19th in English. And so for the 28th today and December 12th, there will be a recorded version for the non-German worshipers. In addition to our Sunday services this Advent, there is an online midweek Advent service brought to us by a number of pastors in our Synod. Last Sunday was Pastor Fleming Blishen from our Saviors in Prince George. So please check our website for the link so you can either join in as it is happening or catch it later on after the fact. Also on our calendar, our German Advents Fire Advent celebration will take place on Sunday, December 12th, immediately following the German service on that day. We begin with a light lunch and then the Advent program with lots of singing and of course some Advent Christmas treats. Most of it is in German naturally, but many of the hymns have English words and there is an English assist available for those who need it. So please feel welcome to attend. So here at Christ Lutheran, if you haven't gathered already, we love Advent and when you are able to come, you will see here, we have decorated, we have our Advent star, we have Advent greenery everywhere, and we have our Advent wreath. There will be additional decorating for the high holy days of Christmas, but for now, we have the muted expectant preparation of Advent. The tradition of the Advent wreath comes to us from Germany back in 1839 in Hamburg. There was a Lutheran pastor, a Johann Heinrich Wichern, who had grown up in poverty and had gone on to form a kind of an urban mission society which worked amongst the poor, including providing schooling, meals, clothing, and faith formation. And he also ran an orphanage. In the weeks leading up to the Christmas, the children kept asking how much longer they had to wait till Christmas. So then Pastor Vakern took a wagon wheel and on the wagon wheel put four white candles on the four points, the four corners, if you will, and in between put six red candles. Every day, Monday to Saturday, he would light a red candle, and then on the Sunday, he would light a white candle. And so the children could visually see and count the days until Christmas came. This wreath eventually evolved into the four candles that we know today, and it was adopted in homes and Lutheran churches in Germany, and then in the early 1900s in North America. Catholics and Orthodox eventually became, came to adopt this practice as well. And so the Advent wreath lives on. So for those of you who might not have a wreath at home or the time or the ability to make one, you can simply use four candles in candle holders or as tea lights or four candles in a row on a log or any configuration you like. It is a meaningful practice to light the candle each Sunday and then as the Sundays go on, the additional candles giving thanks for the week that has passed and praying for the week ahead. So here we begin our service by lighting a candle each Sunday, including a brief reflective word and a prayer. 
And every year our candle lighting has different themes, and this year the theme is that of gifts, the gift of patience, the gift of speech and silence, the gift of hope, and the gift of family. As we light each candle on our wreath, we will open up another gift. And so today's gift is the gift of patience. Waiting is hard. We eagerly anticipate the desires of our hearts and want them to come soon. Children want everything now. We wait for the first day of school or the first snowfall. We wait to see a loved one or at times we wait in trepidation, such as to hear a doctor's news. Just as the farmer waits for crops or the fig tree waits for summer, we are reminded to be patient until the coming of the Lord. We pray, echoing the song of Simeon, who waited his whole life to see the Messiah and whose prayer was answered in the infant Jesus. O God, for whom we long, we thank you for the gift of patience. Grant peace in our hearts as we wait with hope that we may sing with Simeon. My eyes have seen your salvation, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. We pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, your gift to all the world. Amen. We now join in singing the first verse of Light One Candle and Watch for Messiah. Good morning. God promised a leader to establish righteousness and bring safety and salvation to the people of God. And God keeps promises. Hear the words from the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Holy Wisdom, Holy Word. The psalm today is Psalm 25, verses 1 to 10. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Show me your ways, O Lord and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you I have trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You are gracious and upright, O Lord. 
Therefore, you teach sinners in your ways. You lead the lowly in justice and teach the lowly your way. All your paths, O Lord, are steadfast love and faithfulness to those who keep your covenant and your testimonies. The fondest hope among Christians involves being together, growing in holiness, pleasing God, and abounding in love. This lesson is from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. The author writes, How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your heart in holiness, holiness that you may bla be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. Alleluia. Stand up and raise your heads. Your redemption is drawing near. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus is speaking. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations, confused, by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now, when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life and that day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. The good news of Jesus Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. Be on guard, be alert, that the day does not catch you unexpectedly. People will faint for, from fear and foreboding. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. The earth distress among the nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. Some of that has been happening in our world these days. Is it the beginning of end times? Some might suggest that. But for us here, these words say to us, Welcome to Advent, the time of waiting, the time of preparation. Our Gospel text today comes toward the end of Luke's Gospel. Jesus knows that his time is coming near. He has read the political signs of his time. He knows that his life will be coming to an end. He has been watching. He has been speaking. He has been, in reality, he has been speaking in real time, his real time, his world. First century Palestine a small nation under occupation by the Romans, people oppressed, people with little power, people dispirited, people with no hope. Into this darkness, into this time of oppression and not knowing where to turn comes this Jesus of Nazareth, preaching hope and forgiveness and redemption and giving the people something new to look forward to. At the same time, the powers that be aren't crazy about the things that Jesus is saying because Maybe it's making them look bad, or maybe it's going to bring too much disruption. They want to keep everything just the way it is. 
So Jesus, into this dark world, into the world, into this darkness, his words are not sweetness and light, but rather starkness and honesty. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. None of us knows when the end is coming, the end of the world. None of us know when many of the ends are coming, just as people in the past few weeks did not know that the rain would be heavier than usual, that the dry hillsides stripped of trees by fire last summer could not hold the water as it fell, that there would be deadly mudslides and unrelenting floods. We did not know, and we don't always know, but we can watch for signs. We can do our best to prepare, do our best to be ready. More than that, we can take this time of waiting to observe, to evaluate, to discern what is of deepest value to us, what and whom we cherish, what do we hope remains if everything else is torn away. We know not when or how. We can only give thanks for what we have and seek that which endures. As the scripture tells us, seek first for the kingdom of God and all these things will be given unto you. So seek out the goodness in life, cherish the relationships you have, repair and rebuild those relationships that are needing it. Take this time of Advent as a time of seeking and reflecting, cherishing and preparing. And in this time, be watchful and be patient in your waiting. A blessed Advent journey to you all. Amen. <laughs>